personal factors. Each a life cycle stage. People change the goods and services they buy over their lifetimes. The same concept goes to details in food, clothes, furniture, and recreation. Life stage changes usually result from demographics and life-changing events. Marriage, having children, possessing a home, divorce, children going to college, changes in personal income, moving out of the house, and retirement. One of the leading life stage segmentation system is the Nielsen Prism Life Stage Group System. Prism classifications consider a host of demographic factors such as age, education, income, occupation, ethnic city, and housing, and behavioral and lifestyle factors such as purchases, free time activities, and media preferences. The major prism life stage groups carry names such as striving singles, young achievers, mainstream families, midlife success, affluent emptiness, cautious couples, and sustaining seniors. The young achievers group includes seven subsegments, with names like young digerati, bohemian mix, and young influencers. Occupation: A person's occupation affects the goods and services they bought. Marketers try to identify the occupational groups that have an above-average interest in their products and services. Economic situation: A person's economic situation will affect his or her store and product choices. Marketers must keep an eye on trends in personal income, savings, and interest rates in response to the economic situation. Upscale discounter Target has put more emphasis on the payless side of its expect more payless positioning promise. Lifestyle. Although you come from the same subculture, social class, and occupation, you may have quite different lifestyles. Lifestyle is a person's pattern of living, as expressed in his or her psychographics. Lifestyles can be measured in three dimensions, namely AIO or activities, interest, and opinions. Activities such as work, hobbies, shopping. Sports, social events, interest such as food, fashion, family, recreation. Consumers don't just buy products; they buy the values and lifestyles those products represent. Personality and self-concept. Personality is usually described in terms of traits such as self-confidence, dominance, sociability, autonomy. Defensiveness, adaptability, and aggressiveness. Personality can be useful in analyzing consumer behavior for certain product or brand choices. The idea is that brands also have personalities, and consumers are likely to choose brands with personalities that match their own. A brand personality is the specific mix of human traits that may be attributed to a particular brand. One researcher identified five brand personality traits: sincerity, such as being down to earth, honest, wholesome, and cheerful; excitement, such as being daring, spirited, imaginative, and up to that; competence, such as being reliable, intelligent, and successful; sophistication, such as Being upper class and charming, ruggedness such as being outdoorsy and tough. Psychological factors. Motivation. A person has many needs at any given time. A need becomes a motive when it is aroused enough. A motive or drive. Is a need that is sufficiently pressing to direct the person to seek satisfaction of the need. Two popular theories in human psychology are the theories of Sigmund Freud and Abraham Maslow. 
Sigmund Freud assumed that people are largely unconscious about the real psychological forces shaping their behavior. His theory suggests that a person's buying decisions are affected by subconscious motives that even the buyer may not fully understand. Abraham Maslow tried to answer why people are driven by particular needs at particular times, and his theory is that human beings are motivated by a hierarchy of needs. There are physiological needs, safety needs, social needs, esteem needs, and self-actualization needs. Needs are organized in a hierarchy of prepotency. In which more basic needs must be more or less met, rather than all or none, prior to higher needs. Still, the order of needs is not rigid, but instead may be flexible based on external circumstances or individual differences. Perception. It is the process by which people select, organize, and interpret information. To form a meaningful picture of the world, people can form different perceptions of the same stimulus because of three perceptual processes: selective attention, selective distortion, and selective retention. Selective attention: it is the tendency for consumers to screen out most of the information they are exposed to. Marketers have to work very hard to get the consumer's attention. Selective distortion. It is the tendency of people to interpret information in a way that will support what they already believe or what they want to believe. So, a well-designed message may not always come through as expected. Each person. Has their ways to interpret the incoming message into an existing mindset. Selective retention. Consumers will usually forget much of the stimuli they have been exposed to. Consumers will usually store the information that best supports their existing attitudes and beliefs, or the ones they want to have. So, selective retention allows them remember the good points they favor, and forget the negative points that have been made about other brands that they don't like. Because people are exposed to an estimated 3,000 to 5,000 ad messages every day, it is impossible for a person to pay attention to all these stimuli. This is why marketers. Use so much repetition in their advertising campaigns. They have to fight their way to be exposed to the consumers, force their way in, and convince the mind of the consumers that our message is the right one. Learning, learning is changes in an individual's behavior arising from experience. The practical significance of learning theory for marketers is that. They can build up demand for a product by associating it with strong drives, using motivating cues, and providing positive reinforcement. A drive is a strong internal stimulus that calls for action. A drive becomes a motive when it is directed toward a particular stimulus object. For example. A person's drive for self-actualization might motivate him or her to look into buying a camera. Cues are minor stimuli that determine when, where, and how the person responds. For example, the person might spot several camera brands in a shop window, hear of a special sale price, or discuss cameras with a friend. These are all cues that might influence a consumer's response to his or her interest in buying the product. Suppose the consumer buys a Nikon camera. If the experience is rewarding, the consumer will probably use the camera more and more, and his or her response will be reinforced. Then. The next time he or she shops for a camera or for binoculars or some similar product, 
the probability is greater that he or she will buy a Nikon product. Beliefs and attitudes. Through doing and learning, people acquire beliefs and attitudes, and in turn, they influence their buying behavior. A belief is a descriptive thought that a person has about something based on knowledge, opinion, and faith. Marketers are interested in the beliefs that people formulate about specific products and services because these beliefs make up product and brand images that affect buying behavior. If some of the beliefs are wrong and prevent the purchase, the marketer will want to launch a campaign to correct them. An attitude describes a person's relatively consistent evaluations, feelings, and tendencies toward an object or idea. People have attitudes toward religion, politics, clothes, music, food, and almost everything else. An example is, the Japanese made the best electronics products in the world.